Hello, everyone, this is your boy Feltouch here, and welcome back to another episode of Blue Monday Manchester City podcast. So, the last week for Manchester City, it's been a good week for us, it's a nice way to change things around by being able to say that after a very, very decent win against Crystal Palace. It's about time we finally got a big scoreline under our belt and finally we've been able to achieve it. So the last couple of weeks it's been a little bit disappointing but finally it seems like things are perhaps changing around and I think it's largely because of one man and he goes by the name of David Silva. He is just an exceptional player. He really is probably one of the best players to have ever played for Manchester City of all time and I think that we are blessed in a way when we do watch him play because he does doesn't lose the ball. He very, very rarely does. He keeps the ball at his feet so, so nicely. He's one of the best passers of the ball. And when you look at the Spain World Cup winning side and the Euros winning sides as well, David Silva's been an integral player in those sides. He's been fantastic for them at international level as well as at club level for us as well. And I think in my generation, I'm 21 years of age, and the players which I've seen, he for me has to be up there with some of the best players of all time. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments section down below from the current team or the last couple of years who do you think will go down as a Manchester City legend so I want you to see what you guys say comments in down below about what you think about that opinion is David Silva perhaps one of City's best players of all time I want to hear what you guys think and he was just exceptional he scored the first goal of the game he set it up and he helped just kick the ball around they couldn't get anywhere near in Crystal Palace he was such a good player and another player who's fantastic in the game was also Kevin De Bruyne he wasn't scored in 18 games until Saturday and then finally it looked like he was finally going to turn things around he hit the bar for I think it's the 10th time he's hit the bar and post the season the most in the league altogether and then eventually he finally got himself a goal and it was much deserved he also set up one for Vincent Company earlier in the game as well what a strike from Vinny after the game he said in the interview just looked and striked and it went into the back of the net and it was a lovely finish from Vincent so I'm very happy about that nice to see him scoring again he hasn't scored at the home game for around two and a half years or so so it's been a while it's completely deserved and when he plays at times we do look like a completely better side but that's not to say that we weren't struggling a little bit defensively and I have to say the defense and also the goalkeeper had a brilliant game especially the keeper he made a great save in the first half when it was 1-0 kept out Ben Teke it was a good opportunity and he got down very very well and quickly as well a great save great left arm from Caballero and it's nice to have a goalkeeper which is making decent saves in fairness to Bravo when he did play in his last game he's out until the end of the season and I hope that we don't have to see him again it's nothing against him as a person it's just the fact that we need a competent goalkeeper at Manchester City and when you look at performances by goalkeepers such as David De Gea you notice how much of a big difference a great goalkeeper does have at your club I mean he must have saved United 10 points plus this season De Gea alone and it was a great save Caballero and he kept us in the game at that stage but I have to say plaudits must also go out to Nicholas Otamendi I thought he had a very very good game probably one of his best ever games in a City shirt since he's come here I think he's one of those players which benefits from having company telling him what to do he's been a little less suicidal or what I'd like to call like a banzai attack at times he just comes run charging out makes terrible slide challenges very very poor decision maker at times and I think Stones is still a young player he needs someone to tell him what to do at times and Otamendi when he's played with him at times this season hasn't been able to do that and he's not really helped him out at all but the weekend he did really well and he also got himself a goal as well a fantastic header really well driven into the back of the net and it was a good run from him and it was a pretty much the icing on the cake for the fixture he did really really well in the fixture on top of that Sterling scored for about the first time in absolutely ages I decided to take him out of fantasy league team instead put Sané in and Hennessy seemed to be just saving every single shot from Sané but everyone else he was just like go on just get in the back of the net go on Raheem you want to hit that with your left foot go on just stick it in the bottom hand corner and he duly obliged it was a fantastic finish Kevin De Bruyne's goal was pretty poor goalkeeping as well but was some decent finishing in the fixture and I don't think that Hennessy could have done all too much in fact he probably kept the score down a little bit as well but Ottoman he does have to get some plaudits whether he's the long-term answer at City I don't know because every time I watch him play I'm still not 100% convinced by him but he put in a good performance but the problem is that City next year have to prepare for a season perhaps without Vincent Company. you can't rely on the fact that he's going to be fit for the whole of next season so we probably could do with another centre-half now the rumours are that 
Tosin Adebayaro has signed a new contract at City and £25,000 a week and it looked like he could potentially be leaving. Now whether he's a long term solution or not I don't think so. On top of that I don't think that uh, Jason Denea is really going to get a chance when I've seen him play for Sunderland this season he's played either in midfield and he yeah he's good with the ball but defensively at times he's looked very suspect and that's not really a great thing for City at the moment. I think we need a bit more experience next to company. Last year we were linked with Benucci again. We're linked to him still. And we're linked with Rudiger as well, who I don't think is a great centre-half either. I think we just need to sign someone who's a bit more experienced, I think. We need to have sort of a company and Lescott duo back again at the club. And whether Otamendi is the answer or not, I don't know. He's been linked with clubs like Real Madrid. And if they're interested in him, then he must have something about him. I'm just not 100% sure at times what it is. But if he can keep... Keep up the performances. Yes, I know Palace are the greatest side in the world and he's judged more based on his performances throughout the season. But I think that maybe he gets another chance at City. I don't think Mangala will get a chance. I mean, the centre-half position is a big problem for City. I think that John Stones is currently he's still unfit. So it will be interesting to see if he plays alongside company or whether it's Otamendi still. But at the moment, Otamendi doesn't really deserve to get dropped. I also thought, in fairness, that Gao Clichy had a pretty decent game. I don't really ever talk about him. I usually say how bad he is. So for once, I'm going to give him a bit of praise. And I thought he was actually pretty decent in the game. He kept out the Palace side. There was a couple of crosses which he dealt with jumping up and competing with Ben Teke. So he did pretty well in the air. And also getting forward, I thought he was pretty decent as well. So I must say, well done to him. On top of that, the other player which I was going to give a bit of praise to was Gabriel Jesus. He set up another goal. Unfortunately, the reason why he didn't score everyone, I have to apologise to you all, is because I put him on my fantasy league team as captain. In. So if anybody wants to know why Jesus didn't score at the weekend and Sané didn't score, that's the reason why. It, also, if you get Harry Kane in your team, I decided to put him in on Friday as well, and he hasn't scored for Spurs, so there's no surprises there as to why I am bottling the league for Spurs single-handedly because of me. So it was a great performance against Palace, and I think that the overall performance during the fixture was very, very well done. Great merit to the side. We absolutely bossed possession. And I looked at an interesting stat yesterday as well, comparing this season to last season and in terms of draws we've drawn a lot more but we've also won a lot more we've got lots more points than we did last season at this stage and also last year we made a lot more losses than we have done this year as well so although we haven't won anything this year and last year we got to the Champions League semi-final we also won the League Cup if you look at it I mean this year has there been many improvements I mean it's difficult to say I feel like we have been better in the league overall and I think that we have to look at things perhaps in the long term. This year, it's sort of Guardiola getting to know the league a bit better. I mean, there's been a lot of criticism, but I still think at times, when you see the team playing like they did on Saturday, there is massive signs of improvement for me, and there are definite evident signs that perhaps next couple of years, we could perhaps really dominate the English leagues, especially with teams like Chelsea having to play in the Champions League next year. It's not going to be an easy ride for them. Spurs are going to be in it. Liverpool perhaps could be in it. I mean, it will be likely that Manchester United to be in it. Arsenal are going to have to be competing in the Europa League, which is equally a difficult challenge. So it'll be interesting to see which team really comes out on top next year. It'll be very interesting to see how City get on, especially, and hopefully with a couple of interesting signings, especially fullbacks, especially. We've been linked with so many different players over the, continuously over time. I saw Alexandro the other day for 40 million. I saw Kyle Walker for 40 million. Both players I don't really see coming to Manchester City in my personal opinion but we do certainly need to improve those positions especially uh, I don't think Kolarov's the business I don't think Clichy's the business long term uh, Sanya's 34 and Pablo Zabaleta's 32 now absolutely love Pablo but unfortunately I think it's possibly time for him to move on and his contract I believe is running out in the summer as well so unfortunately it might be time to say goodbye to those players but that's how the cookie crumbles unfortunately in the big business world of professional football but still a great performance by City on Saturday and we'll move on to next week's fixture against Leicester City a team which recently have been doing okay they've been scoring goals still they hammered Watford at the weekend they're one of those sides which can either turn out really well or really badly and unfortunately earlier on in the season I went to the Leicester away game and we got absolutely hammered 3-0 down after 20 minutes in the game wasn't a good start Bravo was terrible we played the completely wrong side and it'll be interesting to see what we play against them this time as well because we were outclassed at home against them last year as well so 
I think that perhaps this is a loss. I'm being genuinely serious. I don't think Guardiola will have learned from what he did earlier in the season. I think he'll just expect that we can perhaps just pass the ball. Because when I've watched Leicester play, I've watched them so many times now, they are very happy to concede possession to the other team because they'll know that they'll get a chance on the counter-attack at some point. They're incredibly well organised. I think that Wes Morgan's still out on fit. He's still got a few injuries, so he's going to be missing from the game. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of side they line up with. But still, they're very organised. Vardy's incredible. Incredibly quick. I don't think people give him enough credit for how quick he is on the counter attack. He's rapid. Mares as well, very quick. He's very skillful. Great dribbler on the ball, and I think he can create chances just cutting in on the left foot of his. I mean, overall, I think although it's been a bad season for Leicester, they've certainly still got plenty of potential to destroy us on the counter attack, and that's where we have to be wary. I don't think we can expect to defeat teams like Leicester by five goals to nil like we did against Crystal Palace. And I know Palace had to make a lot of changes at the weekend, but they have been putting in some good performances recently. They've beaten Chelsea away from home, they've beaten Arsenal at home, they beat Liverpool away from home, so they've been putting in some good results. Yes, they didn't have any fit centre-halves currently playing for them at the weekend, but still, we made them look terrible all the weekend. So perhaps possession football may be the answer, but even still, Leicester City are an incredibly good team. They've played against Atletico Madrid, they've played some top teams, they beat Sevilla, who I thought are a very good team this year in Europe, and also in La Liga as well. So fair play to Leicester, but... They will be a very, very difficult game. People perhaps underestimating them based on their league position, but after I watched them earlier on in the season, I can certainly say that this will be a difficult game. And I personally think that they could honestly be us. I think they've got the potential to do it. So, it'll be a difficult game. We'll have to see how City get on. We've got a week's rest, which is always very, very nice. And uh, it gives us plenty of time to get refreshed for the big game against Leicester. <sighs> How great would it be if we were in the Champions League semi-finals again? It would have just been brilliant to be able to watch that, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen. In other news, though, it looks like Chelsea are probably going to win the Premier League. It's been on the cards for a long time, and despite people saying Spurs have bottled the league, I don't really know how you can bottle the league when you were never winning it in the first place. It's hardly a United or a, a Liverpool in any means. I don't really understand where this concept that Spurs have bottled the league because they weren't ever going to win it in reality. It was Chelsea who had the potential to bottle the league and they've still got plenty of time to do it but by the time Spurs next play they could have already won the league Chelsea so it'd be interesting to see how they get on and by what points margin they really win the Premier League by also on top of that I've got a question for you Manchester City fans so this season it looks like we're either going to finish third or fourth thank you very much to Liverpool as well at the weekend for getting a draw and now we've got a game on hand on them so we could still finish third which will be a really big benefit to us and not having to play that stupid Champions League qualifier game which could potentially be difficult you know we got a bit lucky last year played against that dodgy Romanian team so hopefully this year apologies if you are a fan of Stau Bucharest but you're not the greatest team in the world on top of that just based on this year's performance we're not going to win any trophies we could still finish fourth and we could even finish fifth still but there's a nice gap between us after United lost of the weekend I've got a question for City fans now I'm saying this based off our performances this season do you think that you'd rather be in Manchester United's position than what we are currently now I ask this not because of their fifth in the league and so many draws or whatsoever this season I'm asking based on the trophies which they've won this year so they've won the league cup Yes, they probably didn't deserve to win it after a disallowed goal from Manolo Gabbiadini, which was robbed from Southampton. But nonetheless, they're in the semi-finals now of the Europa League. They've got a win in the away leg, first of all, against Celtic de Vigo. And they are pretty much set up, in my opinion, to get through to the final of the Europa League. Now, I'm asking City fans, if you were given the option to finish fifth at the start of the season, win the Europa League, and also win the competition what's it called and win the league cup would you take that i want to know what you think would you rather be in their position right now or would you rather be in city's position because i'm saying this as a fan who's just i mean i'm a big city fan but still i'm a football fan as well and i've got to be realistic because in my opinion I, I don't know what it is i think i'd rather perhaps be in united's position I mean, at the end of the day, you enter football competitions to win things. We don't want to be in an Arsenal position where we're happy about finishing third or fourth. And the thing is, United can still qualify for the Champions League if they win the tournament. Yes, it's going to be difficult if they play against Ajax in the final. They've just battered a very, very good team in the semi-finals there. You never know really know what's going to happen in the final of the Europa League, but still... 
I think that United have actually had a fairly decent season. I know they've spent a lot of money and all these different things, but at the moment, in terms of league position this season, if I was to offer you a chance to finish third in the league, or would you rather win the League Cup and win the Europa League, I'm sure man, many, many of you guys listening would probably rather win the United combo. I want to hear what you guys have got to say. Let me know down in the comments section down below. Hopefully we'll get a win this weekend against Leicester. I'm still incredibly pessimistic. I'm a Manchester City fan from the old school days, so I'm always going to be pessimistic about our results. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed listening to this week's podcast. Thank you very much for joining me. Once again, great feedback on recent videos as well. So thank you very much for all of you who've tuned in. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Arrivederci.